You're listening to the No Labels, No Limits podcast with best-selling author Sarah Box, where you get the inside scoop on the steps action takers and decision makers take to align their purpose to their principles and achieve their goals in business and life. We focus on the mantra, no labels, no limits, no excuses. And now, without further ado, please welcome your commanding coach with plenty of chutzpah and heart, Sarah Box. Hey there, welcome back to the No Labels, No Limits podcast. This is Sarah Box, your host, and I'm super excited to be here for another episode this week with a returning guest, and I'm going to share with you about her in just a minute, but I also want to start by sharing a bit of gratitude um, for those who have gone out and ranked, rated, and left a review on our podcast because it helps us reach more people, and that for me, in, in when our desire is to reach more people with positive, uplifting information and opportunities for them. The people who share that are the ones who make that happen for us. So I want to share um, an actual review we got from user 1255. I was wondering if that's like they were born in December of 55 or it's just some random 1255 number they came up with. But what they said was that the show is inspiring and insightful and more specifically, that the episode with Tammy Guler Loeb inspired them to grow their career in new ways, and that she appreciated, or he, we don't know, 1255, appreciated <laughs> the interview style to help us and our guests bring out the best in ourselves. So I want to thank you for that great podcast review. And also because it helps us now, we're ranking in the top 3% globally out of over more than 3 million podcasts out there, which is kind of a staggering number. Glad I didn't know that before I started. I might not have started. So anyway, let me tell you about our guest today, Ann Carden. Now, Ann and I, right before I hit record, we were trying to figure out how long we've known each other. I actually worked with Ann as one of her clients. We think it's five or six years ago. We're not positive, but it's at least around that range. And Ann is a a magnificent strategic business growth expert. She's the founder of the Expert in You brand and programs, a three-time author and a number one international best-selling author, speaker, and podcast host on her own. She has over 41 years of experience in the business growth and marketing sales arenas. She's worked 13 years in corporate business management, been responsible for the success of multi-million dollar departments, and has been an entrepreneur for the past 30 years. So, you know, she's got some chops around what's it mean to be a successful entrepreneur with three decades under her belt. She's been coaching and consulting others in business for over 12 years and has helped entrepreneurs and owners in more than 50 different industries. So she's got the info going horizontal as well as vertical. She was recently honored as being selected into the who's who in America for 2223. And she was additionally selected into the who's who in America for professional women. Those are a lot of achievements. And I'm so happy to welcome my friend and colleague, Ann Carden, back to the No Labels, No Limits podcast show. Hi, Ann. Hi, Sarah. Thank you so much for having me back. It is absolutely my honor. You know how much I think of you. So I'm excited to be here with you again. Well, I want to start by something that has nothing to do with the expert in your business. I want to know, how's the grandbabies? Oh, my gosh. The, okay, so I have a new grandbaby oh. that was born November 7th. So she's just um, the triplets. The triplets had a little sister, but the triplets are six, Sarah. Oh, my gosh. Yes, were they babies the last time we they were got babies. on a podcast? I think they were still. <laughs> well, there in you go. We, now we know how long it's been. <laughs> yes, wow. they're six. They're in kindergarten. So, but they are wonderful. I don't get to see them near enough, but they are they're so wonderful. And now we have another one to add to the pack, and oh, we have now we have an even up pack: two boys, two girls. So yes. Well, that's nice, and you can split them up. And now the youngest is a boy or girl. Uh, she's a girl. Okay. So there was there was two there were two boys and a girl in the triplet pack, and then now we evened it out with lit. But her name is Charlie. Her her little name is Charlie. So oh. she's a she's a girl, Charlie. Oh, that's so <laughs> sweet. Um, 
Well, let me, okay, we're going to flip now. I could keep talking to you about your grandkids because I know it lights <laughs> you up. And and I just see, and when I follow you and I know you're off to see the kids or sometimes you'll post, and I'm thinking, mm-hmm. oh my gosh, that's so great. Um, but I know that they're like right here in your heart, the love of your life. So yes. how fun to have an extra new grandbaby and a, a November birthday kid. So, hey, that's yes. awesome. And she was really a surprise. So we did not think we were going to get any more. So it was, oh my gosh. So we are so blessed. Yes. Oh, fun. So Anne, you um, have your business, The Expert in You. And I want to dive right into that. First of all, how did you come to name it The Expert in You? I mean, what part of that lifts up for you around your own purpose and vision? That's such a great question. And the the brand kind of, it really emerged on its own because I saw a lot of people going in the coaching and consulting industry or when they decided to enter the industry, they were going down a path that in my opinion was a very slow road, meaning they were taking certifications, they were buying into companies or organizations and trying to learn how to be a coach or learn how to do their thing. It's kind of like going back to school and trying to learn how, but then they didn't have the confidence. They didn't, they still were in education mode, but then they still had to learn how to build a business around that, how to market, how to sell. And so I watched this over and over again. And I was even part of a coaching organization where they were bringing in people to be business coaches. But Sarah, a lot of the people that they were signing up to be business coaches had never owned a business in their whole life. (laughs) So I, it, it always, it felt like such a lack of integrity to me in the industry and what I was seeing. But so I started looking around and I thought, these people that have this expertise, why are they not building their business around that? And it just, it kind of just emerged and I started helping people do that. And even if they were already, had already gone down that path, reeling them back in and saying, let's build your business around your experience, your expertise, your knowledge, your skills, that is your faster path. And then you just need to learn how to package market, sell that, build the business. And you don't have to learn how to do your thing. You're already confident. You already know what you're doing. And when I started doing that with people, it would just take off. Their business would just take off. and, And they're like, I just never thought to do that before or I didn't know how to do that. And I thought that I needed to buy into this. Um, and so it was through that, that that brand emerged because I I said, I wanted to help people do things in a different way and not go the route that sort of the marketers are trying to, to move them into. So- yeah. You want to squish them in a box. Yes, absolutely. The very cookie cutter approach that- Right. Yes. So why do you think people- because you've already you're working with people who are already experts in their field, knowledgeable, mm-hmm. right? So what is it do you think in us? And I will put myself in that box because I know you helped me get clear many years ago and I continue to re- evolve, right, over mm-hmm. time. But right. why do you think it is that even when we have the knowledge and the expertise that we go, oh, maybe I better learn more or do different or oh yeah, I'm sure this mm-hmm. marketer's got the sure file right. thing, right? <laughs> What is it about that that makes people doubt themselves? The honest truth is, I don't think it's as much about them doubting themselves as not knowing how to put the pieces together. Okay. Because when I help people put the pieces together, they they say, oh my gosh, this is, I, I would have never thought to do this, but this is, this feels so good. This feels, and you know, it's, I'm so aligned with this and I'm so confident in this. And when you do that, it, they they just said, I just didn't know that that was possible or I didn't know how to do that. Um, and so I, I don't know if it's doubt or if they just are, don't have the exposure so that there's a different, different way. way. Yeah. Yes, they don't know a different way. That's that's what I think. So when when people come to you, what is the path that they start on? Because I know you've evolved your work since I worked with you. So Mm -hmm. pretend I'm just having a conversation with you. And I say, Anne, I think I think I could really benefit from you. What would my experience with you be like? I know it won't be cookie cutter, but what would it be like? So the first thing I would do is really 
figure out what the value you're going to sell to the market. What is it you're going to actually sell in your coaching, consulting, professional service business? And that would come from, okay, where is all of your expertise? One of the things I help people do, Sarah, is not just think about one piece of their expertise, but what's all of their expertise and how can we pull that value together? And that's where their big opportunity usually is because people don't, they're, they don't come with just one thing that they, they know how to do, right? They've, even if they've been in a career, they have done multiple things in that career. And some of those things they're really strong in and they're very confident and they even love them. And so I like to help them merge sort of the passion as well with what their strengths are. But I would really uncover what are all of the things that you're able to do? And then how can we put all of these pieces together and, and package this in a way that is going to be marketable and it's going to be really high value. So one of the things I know you and I had a conversation about this before we recorded, uh, people go down the path where, okay, I know how to do this and I can create this course, or I know how to do this and I, and I can uh, you know create a membership or something that is really on the low end. And when you come with all the experience and the knowledge, how long did it take you to get that? What was the financial investment? What was the time investment? What was the blood, sweat, and tears that went into all of that experience and expertise? And I call that your collateral. That's really your career collateral. Why? What makes you think that you have to start out at the bottom? You don't. You can start out very, very high because it is just a matter of, again, how do I go sell this to the market? Who's going to be the buyer for that? So the first thing is we create their offers. What is it they're going to sell? What's that packaging, that pricing? What does that look like? What's involved in that? And we create really a proprietary system or process for them. Uh, just like my expert in you brand, all of my programs are expert in you something expert in you, million dollar accelerator, expert in you, business accelerator. So all these different levels. And so I help them really figure out what is that, what is that suite of offers that you're going to have that you want to sell? And then who is that going to be for? You have to know who your market is. And then what do we kind of, how do we want to build your brand around this? Uh, was working with someone this morning, a brand new client that I just started with. And I, I work with them in a customized way in the very beginning to really help them get all of these pieces in place. Even if they're going to go into my mastermind, I work with them in a customized approach at the very beginning. Um, and he has all this brilliant background, crazy background. And, you know, we were able to map out his entire offer this morning um, with all of, and he's like, oh, this is it. This is like, this is exactly what I'm doing. And even pulling in some things he hadn't thought about that even increased the value more. So those are all just pieces that we work on. And then getting the marketing in place, getting the brand uh, really dialed in, the message being relevant to the market that, that you're going to be uh, going into. And then making sure that brand is in alignment with with how you're selling yourself. So if you're one of the things, if you're selling yourself as a really premium coach or a really premium consultant, which is what I help people do, your brand, and when I say your brand, the outside perception of your business, I'm not talking about the graphics. That's a piece of it. The visual is a piece of it. But your brand is in you, is as in people being able to see your expertise, the credibility, the authority, looking like the expert that you truly are because you've spent years developing that. So those are all pieces of helping them really take themselves to the market in the right way and being able to get those premium clients, those first clients. Um, and then from there, helping them be able to close the sales, simplify. But we talked about simple, 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 simple. <laughs> it's Yeah, I think it's easy to overcomplicate. Oh, and if you go this low ticket route and you the funnels and the, oh my gosh, it's just endless. Yes, it can be certainly. And the other piece that, and it's not just in like your own business, but it's in all the processes we set up for the people we want to help. It's like, okay, how much, honestly, I think about this as somebody's client, how much effort is it on my end 
mm-hmm. to access you and what you're helping me with. Because honestly, if it's more time on my end, I'm less inclined to want to hang out. It's like, you're supposed to be helping me, not making it harder. Right, right. So I, what's, go ahead. Oh, no, I, I, I was going to say, you know, part of, part of working with clients as a coach or a consultant is you're trying to collapse time for them. Yep. That, that is what they're buying. They're buying results. They're, they're buying you collapsing time and speed to get the results or the outcome that they're looking for. And so, yes, there, there might still be work to doing that, but you have to make that as simple for them as possible. Yeah, I'm not. It's not opposed to doing the work. It's the friction that we have inadvertently put in there. Like, mm-hmm. click this link, then go here, then do that. It's like, could you make it one? <laughs> could you make my homework or my assignment super simple for me to find? So it's those little things we don't think about when we are mm-hmm. serving others, right? But certainly right. those on the receiving end, especially the high end folks you're talking about too, as well. It's like they don't have time to be messing around. Right. right. So if your systems are simple. And I know that's kind of one of your zones of genius is being able to simplify and make yes. it work. I'm all about simplified. <laughs> so I know that you do a number of things with the um, your business. You know, you've mm-hmm. got your one on one clients. You've got your mastermind. You've got some retreats, right? Mm-hmm. I, yes, I do some high end retreats. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Share a little bit about that, because I think there's people okay. all over the spectrum here are going, oh, that might be a better venue or I mm-hmm. might want to do a combo of things. Talk to me about your retreats, Anne. Oh, my gosh. They are so fun. So I really try to make them as close to a five star experience as I can. And my clients that work with me for a year, uh, you know, they sign for a year, whether that's in my mastermind or whether they are a one-to-one client, they get to come to those retreats. And so I might be teaching something new. So each retreat kind of has a theme, but I uh, will rent a mansion, a celebrity mansion or something just really, really high end where we all stay. And of course, everyone has their own room and all of that, but where we really get to collaborate and get to know each other. And it's a small, intimate group. I usually don't take more than eight people. So you might see a range from five to eight people, depending uh, on who's ready to come to that and, and the topic that we're covering. But I bring in private chefs. So all they have, it's all inclusive. All they have to do is just get themselves there and back. So they're responsible for that. But once they get there, everything is covered. Everything's taken care of. So they get my intensive help during that time. We work on their business. We work on what this next one, for example, it's going to be on how to get them uh, their roadmap to from $250,000 to a million. So that's the that's sort of the theme. And everyone will have their own strategies and their own things they're working on, setting their own goals. But I'll be there to really work with them individually, but also as a, as a collaborative group. So we'll do some masterminding as well, but I bring in private chefs. I bring in a professional photographer to do brand shots all over the mansion. And, uh, we, we do just plan some fun things. So in this next one's going to be in Phoenix, Arizona, it's in May. And we are going to take a hot air balloon ride. Um, and just so I always plan a fun excursion. So like the last time we zip lined, that was a blast. And the time before that, we did a horseback trail ride through the Ozark. So we always do something. And then we did a showboat dinner cruise and we did a lake cruise. Uh, so we do usually two, two outings in that time. But everything is inclusive. So they stay in the mansion, five star meals. I mean, it is like fine dining every single meal from yeah you do gain some weight during these I should just say that (laughs) (laughs) but it you literally are getting a fine dining experience for every single meal and it's just prepared by these amazing chefs um and then yeah so we do the fun stuff and it it's just it is such a it's such an amazing time the friendships that are built the business that gets done the work that gets done and then the fun that we we have and literally people they make friends for life and these are clients that might be on mastermind calls together but bringing them together physically is so different from them just showing up on now they really have time to hang out and get to know each other and it's they're just a blast so I do two a year and I started doing those last year I had them planned actually before COVID 
And then, well, that happened. That happened. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I added them in last year. And, you know, Sarah, I built, this is my sixth business. And this is, pro my retreats are probably the most fun things I've ever done in business. I just, I just absolutely love them. They are just such a blast. So, yeah. So you're, you are underscoring something that I actually think is true. Um, and that is that we don't have to be serious to have great results. We can have fun. We can laugh. We can be with other people. And it's more fun to collaborate, like to be mm -hmm. right there with you, but then have someone come in and say, oh, and what about maybe this, right? That you never would have thought of because it's not yes. how you're wired, right? But they can see the value in it. So, I mean, that that sounds so fun. Um, and the events sound fun, but also when you go somewhere where you don't have to think about like, okay, what are we going to eat or where are we going to go? You actually can just settle in. And they just get to enjoy. Yeah. And I have someone that helps me. So I get to enjoy, which is, I mean, I am pouring into them. I'm not going to say I'm not tired by the end of them of because course. emotionally I'm really pouring into those, those people that are there and I'm giving a hundred percent like the last retreat. I was up until we were working on an event strategy and I was up until 1230 the very last night helping one of my clients make sure that she left that event, made sure she, you know, left that retreat with everything completely mapped out. And that was just my commitment. And that was what I wanted to do. But so I leave probably more tired than everybody else. But um, but you yeah, to it's book just an extra it, day or two for you. I know. I know. Well, the interesting thing is, so my daughter just moved to Phoenix. So this time I actually am doing that. I'm taking a couple of days. I'm going out a couple of days early. I'm going to spend some time with her and then I'll probably stay a day or two after the retreat and spend some time with her. Um, so I am kind of killing two birds with one stone for this next one, which is how I chose Phoenix. But yeah. Well, I like that whole area. So that that'll be beautiful. It will be. Yes. And the so, mansion is exquisite. It's just absolutely what amazing. What part of Phoenix is it in? Are you? You're it's really actually familiar. right outside of Phoenix, so it's going to be in Chandler. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I know where that area is. I've spent many years down in there, back and yeah. forth. Mm -hmm. you know? So it's been a couple. Of years. It's been since COVID since I've last visited that. Ah, area. yeah. I'm looking forward to it. It will be fun. Yes. Well, from us, it would be nice to be there just because it's been so consistently darn cold here and I mean cold. Oh, right. Cold, old, old. So um, I have a, a kind of want to go back to your folks and who now have this plan and they have a strategy and it fits with them. It's aligned with them. How many of the folks you work with just tell you it's like, I didn't even think this would be possible that I could have my dream kind of work mm -hmm. and feel in the groove and be impactful and be well compensated. How many people tell you, like, I spent my life trying to figure this out and never did? Many of them. Um, I don't just work with people that are just starting. I, a lot of times my clients have been in their business for a lot of years and it just hasn't produced the way that they have wanted it to. And it, again, and honestly, Sarah, I made a lot of these mistakes as well, which is where my passion comes from. I went down a lot of those rabbit holes I invested a ton in this industry, trying to figure it out and trying to crack the code, so to speak. And, and I, there was a point even when I thought I was going to quit this industry because I was so frustrated. Um, and so- What in particular I, I, was frustrating to you? And okay, you well, here's an example. Yeah, please. When you worked with me, I offered a short program. That was all I had at that time with coaches and consultants. And I was very frustrated in because I know how to build businesses. And I've been doing that with, you know, hundreds of people through the years. But when I started working with coaches and consultants, I was sort of taught that cookie cutter um, kind of approach. And, you know, you do an eight week program. I even I even worked with a coach who told me you'll never get someone you'll never get a coach or consultant that will sign up with you for a year. But I was working with business owners for a year, small business owners. That was the minimum that I would sign them up with because we're building businesses. It's not right. fast, right? So when I when I kind of went down that path and I did the eight week thing, um, I would what happened is I would watch my clients. I wasn't giving them anything beyond that, and I wasn't even offering 
anything beyond that. So I would watch them go off and still have to try to figure things out, try to implement it. Some of them I would see not continue after, even though they would have results in my program, they would go look for the next shiny object or the next thing that they thought they needed. And so they're piecemealing their business together. And some of them I would watch quit or do something completely different because the next coach would then change them from what we had done. And so I watched this over and over again. And I I felt very unfulfilled because I'm like, I want to help people build businesses. I don't want to just help them do one thing and then send them on their way. And so it was that unfulfillment in me that really made me take a step back and say, I need to do things differently. I have to step out of what the rest of the industry. Now, I still help people create rinse and repeat programs. Those are scale strategies. But my whole business was that. And I didn't. I didn't feel fulfilled. Now I get to help people really A to Z build something. And that that's just a very different, that's just a very different business. Doesn't it just light you up though? When someone comes in, I've got a, I've got almost everything except J, K, and Q. (laughs) Yeah. I love that because those are best results, right? Right. Well, and because they, they recognize it. Yes. Or they'll say, I'm not sure what's missing. And you're going, it's JK and Q. And let's right. look at the whole picture. But it's interesting that you say that because oftentimes the individual people I coach also want these shorter things. I'm going, I can do it, but mm-hmm. you are not going to see a turn or a return on your investment or your of your own time, let alone in the investment in coaching. Yes. Right away. And you have to stick with it. Right. So, But then I think about like, okay, I work with nonprofit clients. Contracts go two months, six months, 12 months longer, depending on how big it is and how long it's going to take to make a change. Mm -hmm. That's the norm. So there's just that difference in like how folks approach, like Mm -hmm. you just don't see an overnight success, right? Right. But you know, what? I think one of my big frustrations with the coaching and consulting industry is we've trained people to think that way. Yeah. There is no other business that you're going to build in two months. I'm sorry. It's just not going to happen. And so we have actually trained people to think that way. And we have, um, when coaches and consultants now, they they buy into something and, and that, is their, that is their mindset. That is their philosophy because so many people are out there doing it. And here's the way I feel about this. I feel like it's a real, it's a, it's a cop out for the coach, for, for me, uh, coaching people, it's a cop out. It's basically saying, I'm going to give you the pieces, but I'm not going to be responsible. You have to just go out and make it happen. And that's what you see over and over again with all of these very short cookie cutter programs. It's like they're, they might be giving them the foundational pieces, but businesses aren't built like that. And, but we have conditioned people, we've conditioned coaches and consultants. So now I'm very clear when I get on a call with someone, even in my marketing, I am very clear. I'm going to sell you what I believe you need, or I'm going to, I'm going to share with you what I believe you need and, and show you what you need. And if you don't want that, I might not be the right person for you. I think you have to draw that line in the sand and you have to set those boundaries for what you will and won't do because we're responsible for our own success at the end of the day. And if I sell something to someone and they have these expectations, but I know that I'm not working with them long enough for that to happen, I don't want to be responsible for their lack of results. Yeah, and and you've been around long Mm -hmm. enough to know how long on average you would expect, you know, like, you know, This group might have a spike early because they've got X, Y, and Z already Mm -hmm. as assets, maybe, right? Or whatever. Um, But to set unrealistic expectations, there's a part of me, I was wondering this. I have these thoughts all by myself sometimes. I want to ask. (laughs) Isn't it amazing, Sarah? You know, it's like I have a very rich interior life. (laughs) I'm like, I wonder this. But I started thinking about all the people who have a desire. So, like, your perspective folks that you serve, right? Or mm-hmm. mine. 
and they and they're starting out and they're working and man they're doing some great stuff but the road is not as easy as it, they were led to believe it would be it's not hard you just have mm-hmm. to stay on it and keep right it's the, it's consistency right, right? and commitment um, mm-hmm. and i think how many people quit had they just turned that next corner and mm-hmm. things would have shifted you know it's that it isn't just about persistence and beating your head against a rock right but it right. is about belief that if you're really doing what you're in alignment with which is mm-hmm. what you help folks with, and you stay true to that, things will start to shift. And this one gal, we were joking, this has been a couple of years ago now, because now their organization is like this most sought after organization in this region, because she's connected her team and all this stuff and their board of directors. But when they first started, they were nobodies, right? And so mm-hmm. then now, but people come and they say, well, how did you do this? I said, yeah, that overnight success that only took you <laughs> right. 10 years. They had right. no clue. They had a vision, they had a plan, mm-hmm. and they just started walking it out and it changed. But mm-hmm. it's amazing what they've done. But I think what if they had quit? What if they would have had a mentor? Well, they did. They had their Oh, they funder, did. Okay. Their funder paid for capacity building for like three or four years with them. And mm-hmm. then they invested in themselves. But had they quit, I just think about all the organizations and mm-hmm. all the people those people serve who would never have had that because right. they quit. And so I guess for me, I just, I'm so glad that you think about that long-term piece. Mm -hmm. And also like, you don't want to be responsible for people who just quit because they got this little thing without all of it to offer them. Yeah. I feel like, I mean, this was really what I had to, when I took a step back, this is really what I had to figure out for myself. Am I really serving people to the best of my ability if I'm following the industry? And I, I don't believe, I don't really believe in the way they're doing it. I don't think it's the best approach. I love so, you for that. <laughs> Just because it's always been done that way doesn't that's mean That's right. It doesn't fit. I, I love that because, you know, one of the things I help people do is eliminate proposals if they can in their sales process. And I, and they all say, well, why do you do proposals? And I say, well, that's, that is how we're supposed to do it. I said, who says? Let me show you how to get rid of these <laughs> because that is the mindset of people. And I know that I'm playing in a very small percentage. I don't know. I only know a couple of people that are even doing things the same way I'm doing it. And we're all very different. So it's it's not like we're the same, but most people are just not, they're not doing this. They're, um, but yeah, I, I just had to take a step back and say, I don't have to do it this way because- right. I don't think it's the best way for people. No. And I think about that too. You know, I, and people, when I first started doing this, people would say, well, no, that's how people want to see their invoices. And I'm thinking, I don't want to spend my time doing that. So I'm going to, I'm going to pretend the normal way is this way. And I was all, (laughs) really, and I was all prepared for someone to say, "Um, we need it broken out like this because I would have said, "I'm, I'm not your gal. Yes, I'm not going to do that. Um, not because I don't see the value in it, but honestly, I'm not going to do it. Or you charge them to do that. Right. But I yes. see, then I hire someone to do it for me. <laughs> right. But you know what? How many people balked at it? Zero. No. Nope. Yeah. A lot of times it is just our thing. It's it the does. way, again, we've been programmed. It's the conditioning. It's, well, I've, you know, and I've had people thank mm-hmm. me. It's like, oh, thank God. That's so much simpler. I said, I'm going to yes. send you this. This is what, unless you need something different, but I'm still going to use the same process. It's like, it's going to be simple, Mm -hmm. simple. Yeah. I I love that. You know, through the years I've worked with like uh, marketers, branding consultants, people that they had, they would have, I heard someone say one day they would have, they have the Chinese menu (laughs) of all the stuff, right? All these different things. And there's so much stuff there. But when I would help them bring their packages and their programs into three things, they would go out and and they would just blow their business up in a good way because it would they could first of all, the client could see the simple path, how to buy something. Nothing is worse than handing somebody a menu and saying, "Okay, we'll pick what you want, and then we'll write a proposal, and then we'll figure out no." Show them what they need and then put that together in a way with with a price 
that they can say yes or no to. And it's just a faster, easier way. It's just a simpler way. It is. And I think when we come from that perspective, like for me, I do what's really just a letter. It's like, this is what we'll do together. Right? It's an agreement. Yes. It's an agreement. And, mm -hmm. um, but it helps me get clear mm -hmm. about why I'm doing that and helps them understand it. But honestly, if they want something extra, we can add it. We can change it. We can take mm -hmm. something out. But it, it's, it can be simple. You know, yes. Simple, and people can have fun with it. And then really what people want to do is get going. Yes, absolutely. Going. Yes. And you're and what you're saying, even though you're really talking about the for profit and the business sector and the entrepreneurs and all of that, I will say it's similar in the nonprofit. I've seen people who like, well, we have all of these things. I'm going just tell me one thing. All of this, if someone's coming and they want help, they want to know. What door do I walk through and who do I talk to? That's really all they care about. Because once they right. get that person, that person's going to help them the rest of the way. So yes. to your point of like, just let's be curious, keep it in these little buckets. Mm -hmm. Yes. And go from there. And that is exactly how I help them create their, their process and their, their program or their offers is here are the buckets that I work in. And and the thing is, every bucket can be something that people feel like they need, something that they would buy individually. But now here's the whole thing, right? So that is the kind of the process that I work them through. I but it. well, yeah. clearly I've taken some of your process and applied it. <laughs> Nothing is a waste, you know. Right. And so real and for people who don't want to necessarily reach out and work with someone, I would encourage you to to jump over that mindset limitation because you mm -hmm. can study, you can do it all on your own, but honestly, you'll still be in your own head doing yes. things the way you expect them to be, or someone else has told you they mm -hmm. should be, or a marketer has, or social media has. And it's so helpful to have an external person like you, Anne, who says, okay, let's take a look at this. You're saying this, I'm seeing this. Where does it go? Like, right. What's yours and what's not? Not only that, Sarah, I have found that people that try to do it on their own completely, completely undervalue themselves. Say more about that. Like, what do you see? Oh, in, like, oh, my goodness. Oh, them? I could give you story after story. Well, so I have. Um, yeah. So I, I have a I think about one of my clients. She was selling something for thirty five hundred dollars and she knew she was good in marketing and sales. So she was kind of doing some of the done for you stuff, but she was cutting her prices with the clients she was bringing in. And she was very frustrated with her business. She said, this is just miserable. I'm working with these people that are just, they're difficult. They, you know, they want everything. She, you know, they're, they're all this scope creep. If you're in the marketing field, you understand what that is, but she was so frustrated. So when she said, I, you know, I, I need to do something different. I know I have more to offer. So we started working together and I think we'd been working together about a, a week and she got an opportunity with someone on LinkedIn and she sends me this email. She knew I was going to tell her to go up on her prices anyway, because that was why she came to me to help her redo things. And she said, okay, Anne, I'm going to charge them $10,000 for this. I know you're going to tell me to go up on my prices. And I looked at it and I said, Amy, this is a $50,000 offer. What? Are you kidding? So we get on a call, we get on a Zoom. And I literally have to walk her through the value to understand the value and get her over. And so she would have gone with the 10,000, right? If, and, and so she didn't. So we went with the 50. She closed in for the 50. And she came back. And this was a really, this was such a valuable thing for me to hear from my client. She said, if I would have gone to them with the 10,000, they wouldn't have bought. They wouldn't have thought I was very good. They wouldn't have invested. And so, but that is a perfect example of someone trying to do it on their own, trying to figure it out on their own. And what they do, Sarah, is they look around at the industry and they say, oh, this is what people are charging. Oh, consultants do this a lot. Oh, they're charging $150 an hour or $200 an hour. Well, that's how I'm going to do my services. And what happens is they totally leave money on the table. They really undervalue what they could be bringing to the market, what they could be getting, and even how they could bring more to the market, but they don't even see their own, they don't see their own value. And I don't mean from a personal standpoint, I mean, in what they can what offer the market. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And there is that irony thing about 
if it's too inexpensive, don't you wonder the quality of it? Oh, I've walked away from things that I thought, oh, this sounds good. And I'd look at it and I thought, okay, yeah, it can't be that good. This, if this person's selling it for this, right? Um, yeah. And it could I, be I, top line, but it just doesn't come across that way. Absolutely. And, and the thing that people have to understand is that pricing is a piece of minds, like the, the psychology. Uh, I always use the, I like to use the example. If I say Lamborghini, what comes to your mind? Premium, awesome, right? Like expensive. Um, if I say cheap used car, what comes to your mind? Well, the pricing has a lot to do with that, right? So when you, people don't realize the psychology. So yes, if your pricing is incongruent with what you're offering or what you're trying to sell or even who you're trying to sell it to, you actually repel those, you repel the best people. And who wants to bring in the, the hardest people to work with? That would be a nice way to say it. Well, really, or folks who don't value their time. And yes. For me, it's a, not only a not valuing the service, but it's themselves. It's like, Absolutely. if this is serious, then do it. If it. And if it's not a fit for you, I respect that. Mm -hmm. I respect right. it. But yes, when you're talking about like that, their time and coming in and mm -hmm. being invested in it, it's a piece. And it's a, it is kind of counterintuitive to think about that, like, well, I shouldn't be, it, then this is not about just artificially adding five or $10,000 to an offer. No, it's there's really a process like, to it. Right. Yes. And yeah. to know your value. And, mm -hmm. um, and you may in the beginning, you know, while you're developing, if you're just starting out having to stay a little lower, but um, your, our enjoyment in doing the work, whatever our expert field is, comes up when we're working with people who want to be in my opinion, who want to be in it with us for as long as we're coaching and supporting them mm -hmm. or doing whatever our service is so that they can be a part and grow and yes. succeed. Yes, absolutely. And I feel, and here's the other piece of it too. Um, at, you know, as I'm getting older, you're, we're all getting older, right? I'm getting older. But my time is, my time is super precious. And so that is a resource that can never be replaced. You will never get more time. And so to just give that away doesn't make sense to me either. Especially, you know, you've spent years building that expertise, that experience, all of that. And so you you kind of said exactly what I was trying to say. Well, you might start a little lower, but my question, why? See, if you're working with a mentor, that's probably not going to happen. Someone that like myself, that really, uh, that's part of a big piece of what we do is helping you get premium pricing for what you're doing. If you're working with someone, you don't have to start there. But that's what I meant when I said people don't understand the value. They leave money on the table. It's they'll look around even at the industry and say, oh, that's what they're charging. Um, I mentioned that. And that's how they price when that's not the right thing for them at all. It's completely off from what they could be doing. So, yeah, working with a mentor or someone that can help you in that area is going to leverage your time. They're also going to probably help you simplify things to get more time back. You, a lot of people associate time with money. Oh, if I, if I raise the price to $100,000, I've got to put in more time. No, no, not when you do it in the right way. It actually will probably be less. And so these are all things that if people don't know this stuff, that is sort of the path that they'll go down. And that's that um, hourly thing. Yes. Too. You know, it's like yes. not sustainable. Yes. Um, and then you're always on a kind of a grind. And I know Absolutely. neither of us are grinders anymore. No, no, we're getting too old for that. <laughs> Done with the grind. The only thing I grind is my coffee beans. Uh, <laughs> I love it. True. So, Anne, where um, I, I'm guessing, High confidence. There are some folks listening right now who are going, oh, that retreat. Oh, I wonder if I should work with Anne so I can maybe someday go to the retreat or talk to her. Where do you want people to find you? Yes, you can reach out to me. You can go to my website and look at a lot of things if you want to. 
Uh, but I love to connect with people. So I always say, reach out to me on LinkedIn if you are on LinkedIn. And if you want to go to, if you want to check out the retreat or just go check it out. And if it, if you are in business and it looks like a fit, you can apply. I only have a few spots left, but uh, you can go to expertinyouretreat.com. Okay. We'll make sure that's in the show notes. And it's okay. Ann Carden, C-A-R-D-E-N. It's Ann L. Carden is my dot com is my is my website. So I do have my middle initial in there because I couldn't get Ann Carden when I did that website. So oh those someone got an Ann Carden. Someone did. I think it's available now, but I'm like, oh, what's the point? I don't I don't know what my my so one of those other is. things like, is it important? Right. Does it matter? Yes. I always give out the link anyway, so it doesn't make any difference. That's another um example of just keeping it simple and being successful. Yes. So, Anne, what would be a parting word of advice or wisdom that you would like to share with the listeners on No Labels, No Limits today? Oh, I would say, well, if I'm talking from a business standpoint, everyone has, they have expertise and knowledge and skills. And you can think about monetizing that as your next step in life. I like to say your next big move. Um, to really give, it is a way of giving back, but it also is a way of uh, having a legacy. It's also a way of monetizing all of that that you have poured into for a, for a very long time. So I would say, don't just quit. Don't just retire. Don't just quit. Don't just, um, yeah, there, there's opportunities there. So even if, even if you decide to do it as you know, as a give back, still leverage your all of those talents and all of that knowledge and experience in some way, but you can monetize it. So I'd like to say that even if you give the money away. How fun is that? Someone said, what would you do with all that money? I said, Oh, so many things I'd love to give money. Oh my gosh. So many mission things that I am so passionate about so fun. that I give to now. I, and I, I could just can't even imagine what it would be like to write these humongous checks to to all those things that I just love to give to. Well, and that's why when people are they're going, well, you don't need that much money. I'm going, it's so fun to help other people. So oh yes. I, I might not need it. I you don't it. need it. How much do you need, right? But how much? Can I yeah, have my coffee, please? <laughs> it's interesting because a lot of people think that way. And to me that's that is not thinking that's not thinking bigger. Um that's kind of settling to me. It's I don't know if I'll yeah, I don't know if I'll ever quit like working, working. I'll always be doing something, whether that's well, a nonprofit. You were or telling, something. you were sharing with me that you remember when I first started coaching with you. I said, Well, my husband wants me to slow down and retire. And I said, He still does. It's not happening. <laughs> well, mine's retired too, and he's just learned to accept it. I it's like, oh no, I'm not ready to do that yet. But I, I have a business with to freedom. Do. You do yeah, too. I do. That's that's one of the things I that's why I love simple. I want to have time to travel. We travel. We have grandkids that are 12 hours away. I mean, all those things. Yep. And my business allows me to do that. And that is also where my passion comes from, to help people be able to do the same thing. It's like you can live a great life and have a fun business and make a lot of money. Yeah, it's and not an either or. No, it's no, it is not. Yes, Absolutely I'll have not. that and I'll have that and I'll have that. That's right. So Labels, No Labels, No Limits podcast listeners, Ann Carden is the real deal. She's fun. You can tell that already. That energy is not fake. She brings it every <laughs> time you talk to her. Aww. And Ann, I'm just always happy to see you, whether it's just looking at what you're doing out in the world through your LinkedIn page, um, but just to connect with you and be a part of your universe and have you in ours as well. So with well, Sarah, all that... You're just, you have blessed me knowing you. So thank you so much. Uh, life is good. <laughs> You've been listening to the No Labels, No Limits podcast with best-selling author, change agent, and strategic vision coach, Sarah Box. 
You can grab the show notes and find out how to work with Sarah at sarahbox.com forward slash no labels, no limits podcast. We'd love this podcast to reach as many people as possible. So please remember to rate, leave a five-star review and share the podcast with someone you think would get value from this conversation. Until next time, keep taking those daily action steps to align your purpose to your principles and achieve your goals in business and life.